These eight lines are not actually German. In fact, with one exception, Lumine, as far as I can tell, they aren't even Latin, which is what I originally thought they were. I could make some assumptions based on the Latin words that they resemble, but you came here for the German breakdown in this song, so let's get into the German part of the song. While we don't know what the full song sounds like yet, as the album doesn't come out until May 17th, Rammstein's official YouTube channel released a 16 second sample of this song, and the lyrics were leaked on some promotional photos for a special vinyl edition of the album found on Amazon.de, link in the description to that. Almost all of the lyrics in this song are single words that start with the inseparable prefix fair or V-E-R. This prefix does a variety of things to the verbs to which it is attached. The two main ways that this affects verbs, and the most important for this song, are as follows. To change the object into the state indicated by the stem of the verb. For example, urteilen is to pronounce judgment, while verurteilen is to convict. This change will become clearer as we go through the lyrics. The other change is to indicate a fault in the action completed through the stem of the verb. This changes the verb laufen, to run, into verlaufen, to get lost. This definitely has some great lyrical opportunities, which Rammstein definitely takes advantage of in this song. We'll take a look at each line alone to see how the prefix changes the verb, and then go back to the full version to see what this all means together. Verlangen, verfluchen. Verlangen could be the verb to request, although this verb can also be sometimes translated as to demand. As a noun, it means desire which, if I know anything about Rammstein, is the more likely translation here. The verb langen, without the V-E-R in front, means to hand or extend, which falls into the first category of fair changes that I mentioned. It changes the object that is being extended or reached towards someone into the thing that is being requested. Verfluchen is similar to the word fluch, which came up in the Deutschland analysis that I did and has a similar definition. This is the verb to damn or curse someone or something. Fluchen, without the V-E-R prefix, means to blaspheme or swear. Which if you do in the direction of someone, you use fair to indicate this change, like we did in the previous example. So together, these two words are cursing desire. Verdammen, Versuchung. The next verb, verdammen, is another word that means to curse or condemn. In this case, there is no verb damen. You can only use this verb with the prefix fair. Similarly, Suchung is also not its own real word, but Versuchung means attempt or try as a noun. This is actually a nominalized abstraction of the verb, which is a fancy way of saying we made a noun out of a verb, which shows us the action that is carried out through the verb. There is a verb suchen, which means to search, and while the noun suchung does not exist, there are several other variants that include prefixes. Untersuchung is a probe or analysis. Durchsuchung is a search or examination and shows up in the word Durchsuchungsbefehl, which is a search warrant. In this line we see Versuchung, which is a noun version of Versuchen, which is to attempt. Therefore the noun is an attempt or try. Verdammen Versuchung, attempting to damn. Verdammnis versprechen. I'm beginning to sense a theme in this song. Verdammnis is the noun for damnation or perdition. Versprechen is the verb to promise. The verb sprechen without the ver prefix means to speak, which highlights another example of the change that the prefix ver can do. Verüben sie verbrechen. Üben means to practice, but verüben is our first example of the other use of the ver prefix. Verüben means to commit or perpetrate, as in a crime. Verbrechen is the noun for crimes. Due to the fact that Z is lowercase, this means that we are looking at the word they and not the formal you. The word order starts with a verb, which means that this could be phrased as a question. All of this says that this line could mean, do they commit crimes, or they commit crimes. I'm leaning towards the second one, but that's only because of the phrasing used in the mirrored line in the second verse in this song. Verheißung verkünden. There is no such word as heisung, but add fair in again, and you end up with a great promise. This one is another example of adding ung to the end of a verb to make it a noun. The verb is fun for other reasons. There is a verb heißen, which has little to do with this verb verheißen. Verheißen means promising, in the sense that something good will come from whatever the action is. 
The noun version verheißung is then a promise. The verb künden means to announce, but verkünden is more like to declare or proclaim. So this says proclaim great promises, but it isn't entirely clear if the subject is the same as the one from the previous line. My money says that it is. Vergebung aller Sünden. Again, Gebung is not a real word, but Vergebung is forgiveness. This comes from the verb Vergeben, which means to forgive. The verb Geben is to give. This is one of the times that the English and the German have very similar constructions. Geben, give. Vergeben, forgive. The second half, aller Sünden, is in the genitive case, which indicates a possession, which means that this line translates as forgiveness of all sins. Verbreiten und vermehren. The verb breiten means to spread something. Add in the prefix fair and you get to distribute or propagate or even to peddle something. The verb mehren means to enhance or augment. The prefix fair only slightly changes the meaning. It becomes to spread, increase or strengthen, which is pretty close to enhancing or augmenting. Im Namen des Herren. Im Namen is in the name. The word des indicates the genitive case again. For anyone who has ever been told that the genitive case is dying, I would like to present this as Exhibit 2 and the previous line where I mentioned the genitive case as Exhibit 1. The word Herren could mean gentleman, as I saw one website translate this, but anyone who thinks that this word is about a gentleman is naive. This translates as the Lord. Im Namen des Herren, therefore, is in the name of the Lord. Zeig dich. Show yourself. This simple one line is a command form in the informal, which by the way is what people use when they're praying. It is referring back to the same Herren as the previous line did. Rammstein is asking God to show himself. If we take a look back at the lyrics in the first verse, there is quite a lot going on. Here's the full translation. Verlangen, verfluchen, verdammen, versuchung, verdammnis versprechen. Veruben sie verbrechen, Verheißung verkünden, Vergebung aller Sünden, Verbreiten und vermehren, Im Namen des Herren, Zeig dich. Cursing desire, Attempting to damn, Promising damnation, They commit crimes, Proclaiming great promise, Forgiveness of all sins, Spreading and multiplying In the name of the Lord, Show yourself. This is a very clear criticism of organized religion, and more specifically Christianity. Let's see what the next verse has to teach us. Verstecken, verstichten. The verb stecken is simply to place or put, but verstecken uses the second change that fair can affect, which is have something go foul, in this case, to hide. The verb verzichten is to quit, which brings this whole meaning to quit hiding. Verbrennen und vernichten. Verbrennen und brennen are some of the most confusing verbs in the German language. They both mean to burn. Let me clear up the confusion while we're here. Brennen means simply to burn in general. Verbrennen is like consuming fire that engulfs everything. The prefix fair in this case puts the action all over the object instead of just one part or another. In this line we have verbrennen, which is referring to God's tendency to burn people in an eternal pit of fire for crossing him. Crucifixion joke not intended, but definitely welcome. Vernichten means to annihilate, or destroy, or even obliterate. This is clearly a continuation of the previous line, where they were saying that God should stop hiding, but now they're saying he should also stop burning people and annihilating things. Verhütung verboten I think Verhütung is a cool way to show what we can do with the prefix Ver. The word Hütung means guard, but Verhütung means prevention. Both words come from the verb Hüten, to guard, and Verhüten, to prevent. These were then turned into nouns, becoming guard and prevention, respectively. In this context, however, it's referring to birth control, as the verb verboten means forbidden, which is a reference to the fact that officially the Catholic Church prohibits their followers from using birth control, as it's preventing life that God has willed into existence. Verstreuen sie Gebote Both streuen and verstreuen mean to scatter or spread, 
but just like the VER in Verbrennen made it so that it went all over whatever the object was, now we have Verstreuen, which means to scatter or spread all over. In this line, the things that are being spread are Gebote, which are commands, or more likely in this context, commandments, as in the Big Ten ones. You know, number three, don't write a song decrying the things God does or does not do. This full line is the reason that I mentioned earlier that I don't think this is actually an indication of a question, but rather a stylistic choice made so that all of the lines start with a word that starts with fair. It simply translates as, they spread their commandments. Verfolgung verkünden. Here we have this word verkünden, which I've already explained means to proclaim. This time they are proclaiming verfolgung, which is persecution in this context. It, of course, comes from the verb verfolgen, which is to persecute. They are proclaiming persecution. This is a reference to people, mostly in the United States, saying that Christianity is under attack and giving examples like us saying Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas in stores, or removing the Ten Commandments from display on government buildings and such. Vergebung der Sünden, verbreiten, sich vermehren, im Namen des Herren, zeig dich. We've seen these four lines before. The translation hasn't changed, with a couple of very subtle exceptions. Instead of Vergebung aller Sünden, it says Vergebung der Sünden, which changes from forgiveness of all sins to forgiveness of the sins. I'm not sure what the significance of this change could be, but I think it might be clear later. If you have any ideas of what this change could indicate, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. The other change is a bit more significant. Instead of verbreiten und vermehren, it now says verbreiten sich vermehren. The insinuation is the same, as they both mean spreading and multiplying, but the second one uses the reflexive pronoun sich, which indicates that they are multiplying themselves. While this was implied in the first verse, mentioning it explicitly in this verse is a bit stronger of a criticism than the first. Verstecken, verzichten verbrennen und vernichten, Verhütung verboten, verstreuen sie Gebote, Verfolgung verkünden, Vergebung der Sünden, verbreiten sich vermehren, im Namen des Herren, zeig dich. Quit hiding, burning and destroying, birth control is forbidden, they spread their commandments, proclaim persecution, forgiveness of the sins, spreading multiplying themselves in the name of the Lord, show yourself. Zeig dich, versteck dich nicht. You know by now that zeig dich means show yourself, so I'll stop talking about it every time it shows up in the rest of the song, as it's repeated a lot in the next couple of verses. The second part of this line is also command form, and uses the reflexive pronoun dich, which means don't hide yourself. Zeig dich, wir vermehren das Licht. Show yourself. We are expanding the light. This line turns the verb vermehren on its head before it was used to say that Christians are multiplying and spreading across the world, but in this line it says we are increasing the light. This is likely an attempt to get God to show himself. Zeig dich, kein Engel in der Not. Not is hardship, distress, or need. This line says no angel in need. This isn't saying that there is an angel that is in need, but rather that no angels show up when you are in need. In order to say that an angel is the one that's in distress, you would have to say kein Engel in Not, which is not what this line is here. This is another reference to God not showing himself, as he doesn't even bother to send his emissaries anymore. For the grammar nerds in the crowd, the phrase in der Not uses the dative case, as even in the figurative nature of this line, the position is not changing with the two-way preposition. If you don't know what I'm talking about, click the link in the description where you can find out more about two-way prepositions, or Wechselpräpositionen. Kein Gott zeigt sich. No God shows himself. This line is pretty straightforward. It is a non-command version of the song title. It's just a nice way to break up the repetitiveness of this part of the song. Der Himmel färbt sich rot. The word Himmel literally translates as sky, but it can also be heaven, which is probably more likely in this context. The verb sich färben is to change color, in this case to turn red, as rot means red. The color red has a ton of different connotations that could have been meant here, but my money is on blood or fire, as embarrassment or blushing are expressed with the verb werden, to become, but the reasoning for this assumption will become clear whenever we get to the next verse. 
In the meantime, here is this verse altogether. Zeig dich, versteck dich nicht. Zeig dich, wir vermehren das Licht. Zeig dich, kein Engel in der Not. Kein Gott zeigt sich, der Himmel färbt sich rot. Show yourself, don't hide yourself. Show yourself, we are increasing the light. Show yourself, no angel in need, no God shows himself. Heaven turns red. Verfehlung, verfolgen. Verfehlung is a transgression, from the verb verfehlen, to neglect or fall short. And the verb verfolgen means to pursue. This verse calls attention to some of the problems that the Catholic Church has been facing in recent years. Many specific examples will follow, but this is simply asking them to pursue the transgressions that they know about. Verführung vergelten. The verb führen means to lead, but verführen is to seduce, ensnare, or debauch. The noun version of verführung is seduction or debauchery. Gelten means to be valid, but vergelten means to repay or retaliate. I like the function of the ver prefix here, as vergelten can be translated as to validate in a way, which shows exactly the function of ver I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The full line is repay debauchery or seduction. Vergnügen verpönt. Vergnügen is one of the words for pleasure in German, and verpönt means taboo or frowned upon. This is a reference to the fact that the Catholic priests can't get married and they are supposed to be celibate. Neither gnügen nor pönt are words, so in this case the prefix fair doesn't really fit either definition, nor is it acting like a real prefix, but rather just another part of the word. Vergnügen doesn't fit either definition that I gave at the beginning of this video for fair, but in the verpönt part, it does show the negativity that falls in line with the second definition that I gave. Vergnügen verpönt. Pleasure frowned upon or taboo. Verlogen und verwöhnt. The word verlogen comes from the verb lügen, the past tense of which is gelogen, and it means to lie, as in not tell the truth. The word verlogen itself means dishonest or fraudulent. The word verwöhnt means spoiled. This one really highlights the second definition that I gave for the prefix ver. Wohnen means to live, but gewöhnen is the verb that is being used here, which means to get used to or acclimate. When you add the prefix fair, the acclimation to which the verb refers is changed into a change for the worse. In this line we are referring back to the previous line, which tells us that pleasure is not only frowned upon, but it's also dishonest and spoiled. This is a reference to sexual abuse scandals that have plagued the Catholic Church for years. They are insinuating that their priests are resorting to sexual abuse because they can't have a normal relationship, which is forbidden by the church. Als versehen sich an Kindern vergehen. These two lines must be read together, and so I did. The verb vergehen alone means to vanish or decay or even to cease to be. But when you add the preposition an and a person, in this case Kinder or children, it becomes to sexually abuse. This is used with the dative case, which is why the plural of kind, normally kinda, now has an n added to the end. This is what happens to plural nouns in the dative case. The first half of this verse uses the conjunction as, not as the conjunction when, but rather as. The noun versehen is a mistake or accident. The verb version, sich versehen, is to make an error. These two lines together translate as sexually abusing children on accident or by accident. Verbreiten und vermehren im Namen des Herren. Zeig dich. These lines are the same as before. Verfehlung verfolgen, Verführung vergelten, Vergnügen verpönt, Verlogen und verwöhnt, als versehen sich an Kindern vergehen, Verbreiten und vermehren im Namen des Herren. Zeig dich. Pursue transgression, repay debauchery. Pleasure is frowned upon, deceptive and spoiled, accidentally abusing children, spreading and multiplying. In the name of the Lord, show yourself. Finally, the chorus repeats itself, which I have translated for you again. Zeig dich, versteck dich nicht. Zeig dich, wir vermehren das Licht. Zeig dich, kein Engel in der Not. Kein Gott zeigt sich. 
der Himmel färbt sich rot. Show yourself, don't hide yourself. Show yourself, we are increasing the light. Show yourself, no angel in need, no God shows himself. Heaven turns red. This song is sure to cause some controversy once it's released in a few weeks. I for one am excited for the new album, but the lyrics in this song are just too on the nose for me. Rammstein is best when they're being more ambiguous in their meanings. Songs like Du hast, with the play on words between hassen and haben, and the overall message of the song that is buried behind the metaphor. Or Engel, which on the surface is about not wanting to become an angel when you die, but underneath there is a message about conformity. Those songs are great because they aren't a straightforward criticism of something. You have to look deeper into the song to really appreciate what they're trying to say. For that reason, I'm a bit skeptical about this song, but from the clip that they released a few weeks ago, I think it will still sound cool no matter what. What do you think about this song and its lyrics? Sound off in the comments below. If you want to know more about Rammstein lyrics, you should definitely check out my friend Vlog Dave. He has a ton of videos about Rammstein and their song lyrics. Check him out, and I'll see you next time. Cheese!